six, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Essex here. Today we're going to do a video to show you some of the pitfalls that you can watch out for when hauling your tractor on a trailer. The amount of improperly loaded and overloaded trailers that you'll see with equipment on it is shockingly and unfortunately common. Um, one thing that guys often do wrong when they're sizing their trailer to their equipment is not calculating the GVW properly. Now the GVW is the gross vehicle weight of the load that these tires are able to carry. Uh, what guys will often do is buy say a 7,000 pound trailer and assume that that trailer can haul 7,000 pounds and that is not correct. The amount of tractor that you can put on your trailer is that 7,000 pounds less the weight of the trailer itself. The trailer is included in that capacity rating. So when you're looking for a trailer and you're sizing your tractor to that trailer, do remember that you need to include the trailer itself in the weight of the GVW. I've seen a lot of unfortunate choices made on the places that guys choose to run their straps or chains. So when you're looking for places on your tractor in order to secure it, it's best to look for places around the chassis um, and not anywhere up around the operator station. You know, throwing a strap, say, across the floorboards here or looping something up and around the grab handles is not a good idea. These are really made for the operator and not for, say, a chain or a strap that's going to get ratcheted down across it. Um, going across the arms and the hood, you know, bad idea. Uh, but you'll find all kinds of areas back here, say, behind your grill guard or over top of your loader torque tube or around the back of the tractor that are really good places to put straps. Uh, my personal favorite in every one of our trailers, you'll find a clevis. You go ahead and put that clevis through the hitch itself, through the, the drawbar in the back, and run a chain through that. And that's a great secure place in order to tie down your load. So a lot of guys will have concerns when it comes to straps versus chains. Um, I, I would echo that. Um, I, whenever I haul my tractors around, always take the time to put chains on my machines. Um, chains are harder to put on than what straps are, right? Because you need to use a binder and stuff in order to tighten that up versus the ratchet, which is very easy on your straps. Um, concerns tend to come from one of two things. Uh, for one, the braking strength of these is lower than what chains are. Um, and if they go across any kind of sharp corner, uh, they can tear and rip. Uh, speaking for our, our own dealership, one of our sales guys here about uh, 10 days ago uh, was hauling an RTV on a small trailer secured down with two of these 3,000 pound straps. Uh, he crossed over top of a train track and when he did so, uh, the bottom of the trailer struck the rail. When that happened, it literally ripped the hitch right out of the back of his truck and the trailer stopped cold. Now, when that happened, the RTV that was on the back of that trailer did not stay on. It was secured with two of these straps um, well within their load rating and properly put on the machine, but these things ripped off and the machine came off of the trailer at probably about 15 miles an hour or so. So keep in mind, uh, <laughs> Do they work? Yes. Are they legal? Sure. Uh, but you talk to guys that run loads and are running trucks and stuff all the time, you'll always find a lot more comfort with putting chains on your equipment. Another thing you want to be mindful of is where you center the load of your tractor on your trailer. You always, when pulling things on, want to have a fair portion of the weight up on your truck pushing down on the bumper. Things are going to tow better that way. Uh, and you can usually see that if you take a step away from your truck and take a look, you'll see either the back end being lifted up or pushed down, and ideally it should be pushed down and that suspension leveled out nicely. One thing you want to watch though is when you back your tractor off, be mindful of how your tongue weight is changing. Um, I'll tell you a personal story here of a mistake that I made one time. Um, with this actual truck and trailer, I was parked on a slope in a customer's driveway, and when I backed my tractor off the back of my trailer, I went onto my ramps and lifted that tongue weight up and took enough weight off the back tires of my truck that the entire thing started sliding backwards and down the hill. I was fortunate enough to be quick on the hydrostat and got off that thing as fast as possible and got the truck back down on the ground. But keep that in mind, your tongue weight is not just set up for trailering the thing down the road. Think about what's happening when you're backing that tractor off and what it might do to your truck. I picked this specific truck, trailer, and tractor for a reason, and it's to be able to show you where you can run into problems with departure angles. You can see here as I approach the ramps and the tractor starts to go up, anything that I got hanging behind the tractor now lowers down to the ground as I approach up the trailer. 
Um, you do need to be mindful on machines that you don't uh, scrape your implements on the ground as you're going up. There are certain tractors, competitors in this space, rhymes with green, color of the grass, um, who will do things on this size tractor that set the backhoe back further by say, putting a second seat back here and moving that hoe further back behind the machine. When you do that kind of stuff, it really ruins your departure angle. So now when you go up ramps like this, you're gonna find sometimes you can't even get, up, get up them because uh, your implement, your back was dragging on the ground. So guys will find creative solutions when they run into those kinds of problems, you know, finding a hill or something to load on. Um, but obviously much nicer if you pay attention to the trailer selection that you have versus the tractor that you've got and make sure you're able to clear everything when you go up those ramps. Another miscalculation that I see guys make are the way that they calculate the weights for their tractors. Oftentimes the weight that you're going to find on a website or a glossy brochure is going to be a shipping weight for the machine, not the machine's operating weight. So when you go through, you need to remember to add things like ballast that you may have in your tires or even the attachments that are on the machine. Um, in the case of something like a BX23, the weight of this is not going to include, say, the bucket on the backhoe, right? Because those come in as separate pieces to the dealership, so they're not included in the machine's shipping weight that you'll find on the back of the brochure. So make sure you go through and total up the weight of all those doodads, the fuel that's in the machine, um, any ballast that's in the tires, cutting edges, implements that you may have hanging onto the machine. Um, all of that stuff should be totaled up into the weight of the load that you've got sitting on your trailer. So that's a couple of tips that I'd have for guys that are hauling around their tractors. Uh, I know many of you have a lot of experience with this kind of stuff, probably a lot more than I do. So if you've got any interesting stories or problems that you've had when it comes to hauling equipment around, leave them down in the comments below. It really helps all of us learn some new things to watch out for and ways to be more safe with our tractors and equipment. So uh, if we can help you with any parts, sales, or service needs that you have, give us a call at Messix, 800-222-3373 or online at Messix.com. are shipping weights. They're not, oh, get out of here. I'm shooting a video.